Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, and in this video, we are going to see what kind of performance we can get out of an FCC Part 15 video transmitter. The advent of mini quad racing has brought many things, including sponsored pilots, sponsored teams, and even cash prizes. Unfortunately, you are not allowed to use an amateur radio for a cash prize, because as soon as you receive money, it is no longer amateur, it is considered professional. That means you must select one of two things. One, a licensed transmission system, or two, an FCC Part 15 compliant system. Now, FCC Part 15 compliant, you can find these stamps on many things, including televisions and microwave ovens. It states something to the tune of that this device may not cause interference, and this device must accept interference, even that which might cause undesired operation. Now, that doesn't sound like a great thing for a video system. But the question is, how, how good do our video systems actually work and how subject are they to outside interference? In this video, we will be using a TBS Greenhorn 25 milliwatt FCC compliant video transmitter. On the, for the antenna, we will be using the left hand circularly polarized air blade. For the receiver, we will mix a couple of different antennas to investigate their performance. First, we're gonna use the air blade, then a three turn helical, then a 10 dBIC crosshair, and finally the 13 dBIC pepper box to see what kind of performance each of these receiver antennas gives this 25 milliwatt transmitter. And you might ask, Alex, why are you going left hand? Well, the Airblade is the best omni antenna I have currently available. So I'm going to, of course, use the best to increase my probability of success. Also, most pilots run right-hand circular polarization, so left-hand is less likely to see interference. So, of course, I'm going to run left-hand. Now, I am going to be flying a Spectre instead of racing a Mini Quad because I'm not a very good Mini Quad pilot. I'm also going to be using the Spectre's 2.4 gigahertz video system. This will create a little bit more RF traffic for the vehicle, and it will also allow me to push behind objects where the 5.8 gigahertz video transmission might not go. I will not be witnessing the test, only my recorder will, so this will hopefully eliminate any bias I might have towards any system. And with that, here's the test. This is a map of my flight plan. As you can see, I will be flying from the lower right-hand corner of the map where it says my location. The green line is my intended flight plan, and I'll do my best to try to keep a stable altitude in flight for all four antenna systems. You'll also see that I have marked the quarter mile, half mile, and three quarter mile point. As much as I'd like to go further, I don't feel comfortable taking this over the roadway over to the far left. Unfortunately, my DVR has failed and I have no idea why it won't record, so I'll resort to just recording the screen. As you can see, I'm taking a few video hits as I'm working my way out here. This is likely due to Wi-Fi traffic as this is an industrial park. Here I'm approaching the quarter mile point. As you can see, the video is unstable and barely usable, certainly not suitable for racing. Here I'm testing some Fresnel zone violations at relatively close range. These trees are approximately 750 feet from my ground station location. As you can see, flying behind them completely takes out my video. For more penetration, we'll probably have to change to a directional antenna. Now we're on to my helical antenna. You can see the signal's a lot cleaner, it doesn't get nearly as much breakup as it's not listening to the large manufacturing facility's Wi-Fi behind me. I'm still getting a little interference here as I approach the quarter mile point, but it's certainly still flyable as I push through it. In fact, the video remains flyable all the way back to the tree line. I turned here simply because I didn't think the helical would actually make it this far. My crosshair will go further. Here again, I'm testing a Fresnel zone violation by flying behind trees. As you can see, the video does occasionally go completely out with the helical, but it's not as severe as with the Omni. Now we're onto the crosshair antenna. I'm speeding this footage up as this is a much longer flight than with the Airblade or the helical. As you can see, the video is a little bit more stable than it was with the helical, but I'm still going to get a little bit of interference at the quarter mile point for some reason. I still don't know why this is. 
As I approach the trees, I'm going to need to climb. Unfortunately, I'm using a Pico CMOS camera, so the video quality isn't very good, especially not at this time of day. But it does illustrate the fact that the video is still holding despite going over those tree lines. Right now I'm at about the half mile point. Video is still holding solid, plenty enough to race. Of course, it's starting to break up here and there as I make my way towards the roadway. As I approach the three quarter mile point out by the roadway, I'm making my turn. Again, it's usable, but not reliable. And as I make the turn, it's completely out. On my way back in, I decide to tease the Fresnel zone a little bit with the trees a half mile away. As you can see, I can tease them a little bit, but go too low and it takes my video out completely. Again, we're going to fly behind some trees at relatively short range. Again, these trees are approximately 750 feet away. As you can see, the crosshair is still getting damaged severely by the trees. Just as much as the helical, maybe a little bit better, but barely any. Now, we'll move on to the pepper box. FYI. My, how much better it flies <laughs> when I got it all set up. I just had an observer who had never flown a model airplane before show up to the field to witness this test. He actually had one in the back of his car and was intrigued by FPV, so I let him give me a little bit of guidance as to what he was seeing on the screen with the pepper box. As you can see, once again, we're getting interference at the quarter mile point. Again, all of them had this, and I do not know why. As I approach the tree line and get into a climb a bit, you can see he walked in front of the antenna and still got a blip, but not severe. As I'm making my way out towards the roadway, I'm noticing that the video feed is surprisingly clean for this distance, especially considering the pepper box's incredibly wide beam. My observer tells me the video is pretty good, so I decide rather than immediately turn around and come back, I'm going to traverse along the roadway and try to stretch the pepper box's legs a little bit. As you can see, the video isn't exactly solid, but it is usable. Well, up until I get to the point where the beam width starts to drop off a little bit and then it's gone. With the test completed, I decided to run the Spectre very low altitude and very fast, just like you would a mini quad in a race, just to see what it would really look like to race with an FCC Part 15 compliant transmitter and a pepper box on the receiver. I have to admit, I'm fairly impressed with the performance of the pepper box, and I imagine that the crosshair and the helical would look fairly similar. Of course, you can see as I go to the side, the pepper box is still holding fairly well, even in a severe bank, pointing the null of the antenna at the pepper box and sending the signal through my car. So it appears that a Part 15 compliant video transmitter at 5.8 GHz is certainly raceable for mini quads. Oh, okay. So I actually started my business based on people. This is a map overview of the Airblade performance. The area in yellow is where the Airblade performed well enough to race. The area in red is where the signal was not good enough for racing. You'll see in the lower right hand corner where I violated the Fresnel zone that the area is red despite being close. This is the helical flight map here in orange. As you can see, very similar to the Airblade flight map. The only place where the signal really wasn't usable for racing is in the lower right hand corner where I flew behind the row of trees. But overall, it's obvious that the helical works better when flying from the corner of your field for mini quad racing. This was a crosshairs flight path. As you can see, I took it out a lot further than I did the helical, and that's because I was surprised the helical made it as far as what it did. But once I passed the half mile point, the cross here really didn't deliver enough to go any further. Of course, I don't know of many mini quad race courses that would get close to half a mile, let alone beyond. It is interesting to note that the interference behind the trees with the crosshair was significantly less than it was with the helical, though there was a few places where it wasn't flyable at all, as indicated by the red line. And last but certainly not least is a pepper box map. You can see in the lower left hand corner where the signal wasn't usable. This is partially from getting out of the pepper box beam, but also because there's from Fresnel violations out there where I was flying behind a few objects. You'll also note that when I flew behind the trees at close range, it didn't perform quite as well as the crosshair did. 
The area in pink is where the pepper box performed well and was adequate for racing. As you can see, it actually exceeded the three quarter mile point with perfectly usable video. The area in blue is where I did the low altitude sport flying attempting to simulate a mini quad race. This is the approximate size of most mini quad tracks and of course the video held fairly well. So it's apparent that you can still race a mini quad on an FCC part 15 transmitter but flying behind objects with that low power becomes a problem. I learned a lot from this test and I hope you did too. Stay tuned for even more testing and thanks for watching.